Have you ever stood at the curse wall and wondered what lays beyond the tethered realms of the exiled lands? Many of us have, and today I'm going to find out. My journey will be split into two. The first is the far southwestern desert. This is a fairly large expanse, so we might find some interesting stuff there. After that, we'll head in basically the opposite direction into the far northeast, past Buccaneer Bay and the confines of the jungle. Rumours have long circulated about what lays beyond the wall here, so I will find out. So, I began my journey just a bit southwest of the unnamed city. With my packed lunch and supplies on my back, I started to trek across the scorching sands, and I had already begun to notice the desert shifting in its form. The tempered roads of Sepameru had given way to strangely shifting sands that seemed to suck me in as I trekked through this harsh landscape. The dunes took wild forms, rising and falling harshly, developing sharp ridges and steep drops. The trek proved difficult, more difficult than I was anticipating, and as the sun began to set that day, I laid down camp just west of a nearby ridge, preparing to tackle it come sunrise. As the sun rose over these strange sands, I donned my climbing boots and began to tackle the ridge. However, as I reached the bottom of the incline, my bracelet glowed, warning me of the curse wall looming ahead. Perhaps this way would not prove fruitful, and thus I chose to turn around, tackling that ridge once again and retracing my steps. Over the coming days, I struggled with the shifting sands beneath my feet. The dunes were almost insurmountable in areas until, eventually, deep in the southwest, they appeared to slowly thin out, giving way to what seemed to be a clearing forming ahead in the distance. On my flank I saw the monolithic statues of the giant kings rising once more from the sand, and bearing left away from what I thought could be another cursed wall, I happened upon the clearing itself. Herein lay some very strange artefacts that I was almost certain I had seen before emaciated, mummified corpses suspended on spikes, and at the centre of the clearing, an empty cross. I felt like I had been here before, as if my journey into this place was somehow created here. More crosses loomed in the sands far beyond, which once more began to rise and fall with increasing violence. Crossing those arduous dunes, I eventually reached a small plateau, which I imagined would give way to a great slope below. It was upon my final steps towards the ridge that I realised this area was never really meant to be traversed by man. The earth had simply fallen away in front of me, and as I peered cautiously over the ridge, I began to think of the weary journey back. At that moment it was as if a gust of wind had taken me, and I flew forwards into the void. Everything faded in front of me, until I found myself flying atop a vast ocean that I had seen somewhere before. The water was all-encompassing, with only the volcano looming in the distance. Eventually, through the fog, I laid my gaze upon an island standing sentinel with its unmistakable Lemurian architecture. As I ducked my head beneath the water, more grand Lemurian relics sat untouched by man. By some dark magic, I had somehow found myself within Zelhar's sunken city. I fell deep below the waves and attempted to escape, desperately clinging to my last gasps of breath. Somewhere in the ruins, I knew that Dagon's Deep Ones worked away quietly, and I had no desire to see them again. Swim as I may, it seemed that almost invisible barriers stopped me at every turn, until I managed to squeeze through. Surfacing in that vast ocean once more, the volcano sat ominously over the horizon. I swam for hours, beyond the breaking point of my muscles, desperately praying to return to the arid desert that had led me here. With that, I closed my eyes, and awoke within Sepameru. Quite how I'd ended up there, I did not know, it was as if I had teleported. I opened my eyes to see Conan stood above me once more, and whilst I tried to explain, a nudge with his boot showcased his disapproval of my water-soaked slumber. With that, I planned my next journey. Donning a heavy waterproof coat, I made my way through the deadly jungle, narrowly avoiding the gigantic serpents. I even happened upon a massive camp that I suspected belonged to the local Defari, but I decided to give it a wide berth. Eventually, as I had done before, I slipped through the curse wall, just north of Buccaneer Bay, and began my journey. I stuck to the coast, following the waterline as I gazed across the environment around me. The ocean seemed to stretch out far and wide, whereas the land on my flank rose horrifically, 
stretching up into vicious mountains. It seemed that these mountains rapidly climbed upwards, occasionally petering out into wonderfully flat plateaus. These areas would be perfect for castles, even villages, if any of the other poor exiles knew how to sneak through the cursed wall. In places, the mountains were so high that I could no longer see the volcano that so often stood omnipresent over this land. As I followed the coast, I decided to try to dip my head into the water, wondering if I'd happen to see that sunken Lemurian city once more. By some divine magic though, there was nothing below, not even water. It was almost as if the gently rippling surface was an illusion left by some creator of our world to trick poor mortals like us. I marched onwards, confused but determined. Eventually the land began to peter out in front of me, falling out into the void once more. There, upon the precipice of infinite nothingness, I found a mountain so enormous that I was determined to scale it. After a full day's work, I did just that, and the earth seemed to fall away into fog, though I once more found the volcano in my view, a memory of home. With nothing more around me, I elected to head back towards civilization, taking the more arduous route through the mountains. After another rough night camping out on one of the plateaus, I traversed the mountains once more. I took some time to observe the very strange flora of that area. It seemed as if various species of grass and flowers melted together strangely here, growing in bizarre, heavily defined lines across points of seeming transition. I also noted some strange climate anomalies, with patches of grass merging into segments of sand, leading up towards the frozen mountains surrounding the volcano. Those strange microbiomes eluded all explanation, and not desiring to end up scaling those frozen cliffs, I decided to take a quick venture north before heading home, hoping to merge back onto the shore eventually. It was a little further north where bizarre things began to occur. The grasslands fully gave in to another desert, seemingly much tougher to tackle than the previous. In the distance, the volcano seemed to hang from an icy ledge, and the sand dunes took strange forms, as if they had once been the home of an enormous serpent. I ran through that desert, the sand seeming to stretch further north than I ever thought possible. I chased that dream of freedom, to be rid of the exiled lands for good. Though my legs grew weary, my boots sliding amongst the sands below, I pushed onwards. Eventually, in my excited delirium, the desert sun disappeared, though not through natural process. The sky was blackened quickly, and in front of me, a skeletal view of a cavern that I recognised instantly. Through the gaps in the stone, I could see the vile core of the Well of Skelos, leeching the power of Set throughout the enormous cave inside. I walked forwards even further, getting closer to those tendrils of power, until the darkness enveloped me fully. I awoke once more back at the tavern in Sepameru, and even as I tried to explain the bizarre happenings, Conan was not best pleased to find me unconscious on the floor again. Looks like I'll be buying the ale for the foreseeable future. <laughs> 